Ah, yeah. Ah, yeah. See, there he's got a little bite of me, and it's quite sore. I won't lie. And hopefully I'll be able to wiggle my finger out. Luckily, it was just the tip of my finger. But you can see how strong these little geckos can be. Look how he's just following my, my finger to be able to defend himself. Very cool little species of gecko. Wow. Hi guys and welcome to my channel. Today we're in Pula Way, uh, just north of the island of Sumatra in Indonesia. And we've got probably one of the most beautiful geckos around the world, as well as one of the largest geckos around the world, is the Tokay gecko. Now these guys are sexually dimorphic, uh, meaning the males and females have got differences with, between each other. And the males are far brighter colored than the females. The females are a little bit duller. And then the males also get a lot bigger than the females. The males get between around 30 to 40 centimeters in length with really large ones about 45 centimeters that's including their tail and females between 20 to 30 centimeters. Now they occur throughout most of Southeast Asia from India down to Bangladesh across through China, Thailand and down into the Indonesian islands of uh, Sumatra, Borneo and the Philippines. They've also been introduced into other areas around the world where they're non-native species in Florida, Hawaii, Belize and some other smaller islands where they're actually considered to be pest and invasive species. Uh, due to their very large size you can imagine these guys feeding on quite a lot of prey. So Tokay geckos are famous for the, the sound that they make. There's only two groups of uh, reptilians that actually vocalize and that's your crocodilians and your geckos and these guys are world famous for that that they make uh, to be able to attract mates or to be able to challenge rivals. Um, they also do a little bit of a which other small tropical house geckos do before they do their big vocalization of the which they do quite a few times in repeatedness. So it's an amazing species of gecko, uh, a really beautiful species of gecko like you can see. Hey, hey, hey. And they can be quite bitey as you can see. This is not a large specimen, so I did actually take a bite catching this guy. Um, but really, really big ones can really give a big bite and if it's on softer skin, will definitely draw blood. Um, they're also known to be a little bit bulldoggy and they tend to hold on for quite long periods of time. I've heard some people being held on for up to an hour on their fingers or on their arms, wherever they've been bitten. So please do be careful. Uh, they've got really, really strong jaw pressure and bite force, which allows them to crunch through the prey items that they enjoy eating, which is pretty much anything they like to eat from bugs, moths, locusts, uh, as well as small invertebrates. They'll even eat um, other geckos. When we first arrived here, I saw one probably double the size of this. Uh, he was busy eating a tropical house gecko and they'll swallow them down quite easily. Now, as opposed to being a kind of active hunter, these guys have got little ranges which they'll sit and chill in, either a tree like this or in human habitation. Uh, they're quite good at, um, at surviving in human niches, meaning in and around human properties where they'll live in between the walls and the crevices of the roof uh, during the day and at night time they'll come out to their favorite perch or their favorite light source where, which will attract a lot of insects and food. Uh, they'll tend to sit and wait for something to come past and then with their vice grip jaws and their very quick movement uh, they'll snatch them up and swallow them whole. Now due to their extremely large size these guys have got incredible grip like you can see here if I pull on his feet you can see how sticky these guys 
feet are. So they've got these sate or little filaments underneath their, or on their little feet, and that allows them to increase surface area and able to, for them to hold on to almost vertical and upside down surfaces. So an incredible adaptation that these gecko have. They also have little hooks or little claws on the end of their feet, which they, they help them as well for holding on. Now, the strength of this is quite remarkable. Uh, I've seen these guys almost come loose off a roof and they'll literally hold on with just a couple of toes and support their entire body weight, which is absolutely incredible. So a really interesting fact about these guys is they've actually got a third, a third eye, uh, part of the penile gland. And there's only, other, there's only a few other species of reptilian that have this. And it's used to be able to differentiate between light changes and light conditions, as well as be, being able to determine uh, when breeding season starts and ends. Um, the breeding season of these geckos is between four to six months in length, uh, at which point the males will secrete a certain pheromone uh, to be able to attract females and then they'll breed and copulate and the female will lay eggs roughly once every month or so and that will be one to two hard-shelled eggs where she'll find a little crevice or safe place to be able to deposit her eggs at which point she will stay and protect those eggs until they hatch so a little bit of maternal care within these geckos which is really awesome so the Tokyo geckos are crespula to nocturnal geckos, meaning they'll sleep majority of the day. And when they do sleep up in these trees or alongside the walls, what they're able to do is completely flatten their body. And they use these skin folds, which is able to then flatten against the tree or the surface that they're on and helps them not cast a shadow so that they can help avoid predators. Very, very cool adaptation. And as you might see with this beautiful coloration, you would think, that it wouldn't be a very good camouflaged animal, but it works beautifully in this dappled shade up in the trees to be able to camouflage themselves from predators during the day. So Tokay geckos actually smell the world through their nose, so they breathe and smell through their noses. Um, so they'll smell for pheromones or scents of predators, as well as using their tongues. So they'll tick, flick their tongues out and then pull it back into an olfactory organ in the back of their mouths called the Jacobson's organ, which will help them detect prey items and pheromones from females or males in the area. So very similar to a snake in that regard. They've also got two external ears, which you can actually see on the outside here. These beautiful external ears, these openings that if you actually shine a light through it, you can see straight through the gecko's head. And that's on both sides here with a little very thin membra membrane that covers it up to prevent any sort of dirt or soil to go inside and to help them hear and vocalize and hear each other through the jungle. So Tokyo geckos are quite territorial geckos. Uh, during the breeding season they'll make that um, typical Tokyo call in the afternoons and in the evenings to be able to attract a mate or to ward off other males. Um, at which point if the female arrives he'll be a happy chappy but if another male arrives, these guys can be quite territorial and will actually have fights and scare off other males. If they're equally sized, the fight can get quite brutal. Uh, but if it's a smaller male, he'll quite quickly run off to another direction. Now, these guys have got vice-like bites. So generally, when people do get bitten, they tend to hold on for a while. And a good technique to be able to let, help let go is, let's hope he doesn't bite me is to be able to just let him hold onto a surface like this and give him a simple escape route. And there you hear that little call of him telling me to let him go and leave me alone. And what a cool little gecko this guy is. Just incredible beauty, look at that. Those orange spots and the bright like grayish blue hues. Really, really stunning little gecko and very, very strong gecko. They can hold up to a couple of pounds 
on these sticky little fingers, able to hang vertically on vertical walls for long periods of time, as well as completely upside down. So there we have it guys, one of the most beautiful geckos in the world, the Tokay gecko, one of the largest species of gecko widespread throughout Asia and I think it's time to let this guy go back to his little home. So on that note, if you liked this video, please do hit the subscribe button, hit that notifications bell and remember to stand for what we stand on.